And a big, big welcome to everyone in the room and to you, Wim uh, Sukat, for being with us today. I was at the conference when uh, Wim did the session. Was it for the first time that you offered the session at the conference? Yeah. And uh, everyone walked out talking about this session and I hadn't attended it. And I was like, oh no, what are we going to do? So we invited Wim to do it again uh, for us here. So for all of you who weren't able to listen to this beautiful elegance of noticing, art and elegance of noticing um and something you do beautifully women as well as elegantly present this to us with many beautiful messages so i give the microphone over to you enjoy your session thank you um yeah thank you for uh, for the invitation also it's um um yeah because on, on the workshop in in vienna uh i also heard uh the rumor <laughs> that people liked the, the the thing i did uh, and then i asked myself the question what have i done that made people like it um i still don't know actually <laughs> uh so maybe today it will be different or, uh, but so be it um um yeah i think i'm just going to start with the presentation i've made a presentation uh that will be a sort of guiding line for um for our uh, gathering today but i hope there will be a lot of questions uh that that i will be interrupted a lot of times <laughs> um because uh, that's also a thing i i look forward to uh, that we create the webinar of the moment itself uh, in a way so here I go, um, share screen. Okay, can you see the first slides? Yeah, okay. Well, that uh, that's a suggestion for the menu for today. Um, for the people who have eaten yet, uh, this will be the menu. <laughs> um, I surely want to tell a story once upon a time, I was a quality care coordinator of a pupil guidance center. Uh, that doesn't sound as, a, as appealing as another fairy tale, but it, it, it has also has charms. Um, because I, I learned a lot in that, in that uh, experience, I think. Um, but also, uh, and Sven, by the way, great to see you here too, because Sven is a, also a good friend of mine. And we like to, to, um, to reflect uh, often based on the shoulders of giants in solution focus world and i have i've also gathered some giants uh, in in the middle um because what, what i'm intrigued about is this uh, this noticing concept um and how we can train this noticing muscle so that's in the left corner beneath uh, how we can create a sort of virtual reality maybe uh, and how we can reinforce ourselves uh, in this and in the right corner uh, beneath um, uh, and it, by the way that's an, uh, an, uh, an excerpt I, I picked out of your workshop in Vienna you were talking together with Monica about uh, being in the moment uh, and, and the gift of space I thought wow Oh, that's great the gift of space <laughs> i want to do something with that uh, the gift of of time and environment um th this combination is something that intrigues me um a lot i think um but maybe just uh yeah before um warming up uh i want to to ask you people uh if you know these giants I can also tell you that not every giant is a solution focused giant, <laughs> uh, but I'm curious um, if you recognize the people who are in the middle um, of the screen. Maybe you can write it in the chat, um, but on the other hand, I can't read the chat, I think, when I'm uh, sharing the screen. Um, so maybe, Annie, if you could name what's coming up in the chat then I can uh, say if it is true or false. <laughs> so um, who do you think who is in the middle of these uh, giants? I'm looking at the chat so far, nothing's come in, but I do see 
Aoki-san. Ja, ja. Aoki-san is uh, indeed uh, yeah, uh, a man who, had, who has inspired me in 2015. Um, so I will tell later about it uh, later on. There's Insu who came up. Yeah, left corner from beneath. Milton Erickson. Yes. Milton Erickson is the left above in the corner. Steve Shazer as well. Yes, yes. Mr. Wittgenstein. Indeed. Yeah. There's an ocean of meaning and a drop of grammar. There's also a quotation of Wittgenstein, which I like a lot. Mm. And then Gregory, I think at the top, Gregory Bateson. Gregory Bateson, yes. And Aristotle. Yes. Luke Isabart. Yes, Luke Isabart in the white corner above mm. with the red scarf. Peter de Jong, and it's a question mark. That's who I thought it was too, but I'm not 100% sure. Is it him? Yes, it is. Yeah. Next to Gregory. Yeah. So I think, yeah, there's. Uh, one, two, three left, and there's a, a picture of a group in the middle. I can also tell you that this group is uh, the team I'm working for at the moment. So uh, they are also a giant for me because <laughs> I also learn a lot from them. Um, the man with the tie in, in the, on the left is uh, Alfred Korzybski. Alfred Kozybski is a is a linguist, uh, and the Le Kiesebaert with the Kozybski Institute in Bruges uh, has his, also one of his main inspirations were from Alfred Kozybski. And then further on, we have between Aoki San and Steve De Chaser, we have John Berger. I don't know if anybody knows him. He's an art critic writer. So, um, and he has written an, a fabulous book, very solution focused, but he doesn't know it yet. <laughs> um, and then we have um, the guy with the hat on and the several colors in the background, Steve Reich, that's a um, minimal music composer. And the um, colors um, um, at the back is uh, from a, a work of uh, Gerhard Richter which is an, uh, an artist from, from Germany. But I will talk more about them uh, later on and why they are a giant for me. Um, yeah, so I will go for one. Another thing for in the menu, which I also very like, is um, I was thinking about that um, because I also have children on my own. Uh, they are getting older and older. And I was... Um, getting a little bit nostalgic about the early days when they were so little and so full of um, wonderness. The, um, they were eager to explore, to play, to get excited. And I think that's um, I, th I think that's a great thing to do also as an adult. And that's still also a thing I like to do in my work um, to make it as joyful as possible to get excited and to explore to, to be wondered about the things that happen and um, so I hope um, um, every single one of you has also been a child in the earlier days um, so you have the resources to be a child <laughs> you just have to go back to that um, period and try to do it again. So as I have been saying, the, it won't be the same workshop as in Vienna. So um, for the people who join in and, and hoped it would be the same workshop, then I have some bad news. It's, uh, it's changing all the time, this workshop. So only I can only invite you to, to notice the, the bits of pieces of useful change that comes up for you. And if necessary, but it's it's not necessary at all, you can choose to amplify it also. Uh, but for the people who have been witnessing the workshop in Vienna, I also have good news because it won't it will be different uh, because it, the workshop is changing all the time. And so I also invite you to 
know those bits or pieces of, of useful change. Uh, and I think that's my main goal for today. Uh, also because I don't want to have too much pressure on my shoulders. <laughs> uh, but in a way it's a, yeah, it's an ecology of attending workshops. I think if I would have a, the possibility to have a chat with, um, with Gregory Bateson, uh, who wrote the, um, the Steps to an Ecology of Mind, uh, I would be eager to know his, um, um, his ideas about an ecology of attending workshops or webinars or something like that. The Elegant Art of Noticing actually is an article. Um, I have written this article in 2019 in the host leadership field, uh, field book uh, edited by Mark McCurgo, and I hope I pronounced his name correctly, Pierre Rigi Pugliese. Um, and the full title is The Elegant Art of Noticing, Utilizing What Happens to Improve the Quality of Interactions. Now that was back then in 2019, uh, but the word utilizing is a, it's not a word I invented. It was a word that um, Milton Erickson used in his, uh, in his work. And this utilizing concept is something that also triggers me um, to think about it. How can I adapt it in, um, in organizations mainly? And uh, I work with teams, I work in, uh, with organizations. Um, and how can I adapt this concept from out of a therapeutical um, setting? Um, yeah, in, in, uh, in organizations and teams and corporations and so on. And I also, and that's, that's something that came up in my mind um, today, how on earth did I get to this article? Hmm. Reviewing process. <laughs> Uh, I went through uh, thanks to the SFYO um, and my um, reviewers were John Brooker and uh, John Wheeler um, because I have I've had done some work in the pupil guidance center which I was working for uh, because it was an assignment I, I got to um, to um, to lead the process of a of, um, yeah, uh, change facilitation to a renewed organizational structure and so on. So I, I wrote uh, um, a piece about it and it has been reviewed by uh, John and John. <laughs> um, and that that gave me not only a lot of inspiration, but it also highlighted my um, things I did with which I wasn't aware of. Um, and that was very en enlightening for me. Um, and it kept dribbling in. <laughs> uh, and from there on, I, I started to, to um, constantly practice more of the things I've written in my review process and also in the article of um, The Elegant Art of Noticing. So um, I'm still grateful for this, um, um, for the opportunity I had to, to be reviewed. Now about this concept of uh, utilizing or utilization, um, um, I, how do I say it? It's, it's not easy to explain it uh, actually, I think, uh, because it's from Milton Erickson and his uh, hypnotic uh, therapeutical um, um, setting. But this was a description I think that, that connects the most with the thing I try to do. So utilization, it's, it's much more than a simple language pattern. And that sentence uh, alone is a very intriguing one for me because I've also noticed in, in the SF community, if I may say so, um, that there's a lot of focus on, on uh, asking questions using language. Um, I see some movements about, it's all about the questions. Uh, and then there's a movement, it's all about the listening. Um, and I think I'm getting in the movement and about, it's all about noticing maybe. Uh, um, but for Milton Erickson, the central principle was uh, uh, a client's unique patterns of self-expression and how we recognize that and how we utilize it uh, as, a, as a basis of our further work. 
And I will give some some examples later on how I do this in, in my work as a team and network coach, by the way. At the moment, I work as a team and network coach in, a, in youth care, welfare, mental health, uh, and so on. Uh, but maybe the, the story of the lady with the African violets, I don't know if you don't know the story from uh, Milton Erickson, but it's a typical story. I think it's it's um, so beautiful in, in its, in, in its um, essence. Um, I, will I will tell about it briefly because I can't get all the nuances. Um, um, I can't tell it correctly. But briefly, um, Milton Erickson went to a house where there was a, a woman who, who was depressed. And um, Milton Erickson was asked to, to help that woman. Um, so he went in and he, uh, he knew that it was a very Christian woman. Yeah? So uh, um, it was a, a woman who regularly went to church. But when she, when she was depressed now, she didn't went to church anymore. She was isolated and so on and so on. And to make a long story shorter, Milton Erickson noticed um, a bunch of African violets, so flowers uh, in the home of, the, of that woman. And he noticed that these flowers were um, the, um, um, how do I say it, uh, that the woman managed to take care of these flowers. So Milton Erickson noticed in the environment of the home of that woman that she was able of taking care of flowers. And he utilized that, uh, he saw it, he utilized it. Uh, and yeah, on this Milton Erickson way, <laughs> he, uh, he did his thing and he got this uh, lady um, uh, reactivated. Uh, um, also to be a good Christian woman again, uh, by uh, bringing flowers, African violets, to every newborn child in, in, the, in the city where she lives. Uh, so that was a, a very beautiful story of, of how Milton Erickson connects the thing he saw in the environment of, of, of that woman, uh, and also the, the, the values, the things uh, that that woman found important, namely being a good Christian woman. Uh, Milton Erickson related these things. And so the lady was able to get out of the, the depression and being meaningful to other people, namely newly parents and newborn um, children and so on. But if you want to read the story, and that's also always something with stories, they, they change also over the time. <laughs> so what the actual story is, I don't know. <laughs> Um, but there's a link in the presentation, so if you, you want to get a, a better notion of it, uh, you can uh, read it later on. Mm. So this, yeah, so much about the concept of utilizing. And, um, yeah, I, I will explain further on how I, uh, I will link to this in, in my work. So maybe I will... Stop sharing now for a moment um, so I can tell my story about my experience um, as a coordinator in the Pupil Guidance Center uh, because I like to see people when I tell a story. I don't like to look at the presentation. <laughs> so I'm going to seek how I can stop it because my cursor is vanishing. Okay, here I am again. Um, maybe about the story, uh, once upon a time. So once upon a time, I was a quality care coordinator of a pupil guidance center in the city of Ghent, which lays in the west coast of Belgium. And the other half of Belgium is a no coast of Belgium in a way. <laughs> um, but, I had the assignment, uh, or I was asked to to uh, facilitate it, um, uh, uh, the changing, uh, facilitating the change management process of the pupil guidance center, um, and that was a tricky one because uh, there are several um, centers of pupil guidance in in, uh, in Flanders, so there is also an umbrella organization uh, above it. Uh, 
uh, and it was all, always seeking um, how can I be truthful to the umbrella organization and how can I adapt it in the local, in my organization. And, um, and the hard thing with, with um, structures and, and especially umbrella organizations, they, they want to seek some, some um, how do I say it? Um, all the pupil guidance center have to reorganize like this, uh, something like that. <laughs> But um, the the management team, which I was also a part of, um, um, I myself, we had some doubts about um, it, if it would work. Non, not only because of the content, uh, uh, what is needed to um, to facilitate change, and we have to define roles and and functions and so on, and to regroup, uh, create other teams. Uh, but also the yeah the, the more human aspect uh, uh, this changing uh, how how is this for for an employee um, how will they cope with all these changes yeah. so I um, maybe just a little context uh, there are, the pupil guidance center has about 180 uh, employees. Um, with doctors, nurses, uh, psychologists, social workers, back office workers as administrative uh, and, and so on. So all these people, um, uh, it was the objective of, of getting them into the story of this changing process. So um, we, we created a team, um, we called it the, the flying wheel team, um, we gave it a name. Um, because changes can 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 um, accumulate uh, a lot and getting stronger and stronger like a flying wheel. Uh, um, so we so we gathered um, colleagues uh, from from the field, uh, from doctors, nurses, social workers, and so on, to think together about this changing process that we uh, had to go through. Um, so yeah, I, I actually there were all these meetings were mini workshops for me. <laughs> uh, it was also always a new start. Uh, so what will we do next, and and what do we want to achieve? And uh, imagine that it works well. Uh, how how will we know this? So I did my uh, classical SF thing, um, and what I noticed, and that's the main important thing I want to tell about my story that um, there were some colleagues also trained in SF, but there were more colleagues not trained in SF who were also in that flying wheel team. And it, it was great to, to see that um, after a while, that these colleagues also came came by by me um, knocking on my door and say, oh, Wim, oh, I am just thinking about something. I noticed this problem with the colleagues. Uh, but I, I was thinking, what do we want instead? <laughs> that was, oh, that's a great question. <laughs> so I, they, they picked over the, the SF thing I did uh, and they, they, they managed to, to, to implement it on their own although they, they, they didn't have any SF training. Um, it was great to, to see, it was great to notice. Um, and another example that, that still gives me some, some goosebumps is that um, with the Flying Wheel team, we had some uh, uh, agreed to, to go further in dialogue with the other um, um, employees and also with the management team which for me was was uh, yeah, uh, a difficult one because I was part of the management team and uh, I have been an, a, a field worker. So I was um, seeking my spot in between. Uh, but that moment when I was at the, the meeting of the management team, two colleagues of the flying wheel team came by and also asked questions to my director and to my colleagues of the management team. Uh, and I remember that my director was talking about this problem he was struggling with uh, as a director and from the management team. Oh, how can we do this? How can we do that? And then one of the colleagues of the flying wheel team said, uh, okay, Hugo, which was his name, 
but suppose tomorrow, uh, suppose that a miracle would happen uh, and, and the problem you're talking about now will, 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 will be vanished. Uh, what will you notice? What will be different? What do you want instead? <laughs> I was sitting there <laughs> just uh, leaning back um, and, and just enjoying uh, how people who haven't been trained in SF were picking up SF questions, uh, SF interventions, and also SF mindset, if I can use this name. Uh, um, um, and that was something that, that still intrigues me. And, and, and that's, uh, by the way, the, the thing I did a review, review process about. Uh, uh, and it still, it still intrigues me. Now I work as a team and network coach. And I also notice um, equal things. Uh, just being who I am, just doing my SF thing um has a has an effect uh and i don't always have to amplify it uh and and that's um yeah i, I think i will study on this for the rest of my life it's, it's so so amazing to to see what happens and to ask questions about what is it that made this happen and i don't quite often i don't know <laughs> so um so i'm trying to 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 train myself how can i be more aware of what i notice and what can i learn about that also for my own practice also for the um, um the job i do as a team coach as a network coach um because that's also a very um interesting thing i have to coach networks, uh, organizations, uh, because our network exists of 15 different organizations in youth care, wealth care, and uh, mental health, and so on. And they also want to achieve goals. So I also have an assignment to, to facilitate them. And I also noticed there uh, some interesting examples of just throwing some SF things <laughs> and leaning back and let them do their thing and they're doing more as f sometimes than i uh, than i thought and that's yeah that's something that um, that intrigues me a lot uh, um maybe I, i'll if it's okay for you if there are any questions please interrupt um uh, or something i have to um, clarify if not i will present the presentation again. Oh, and as you may notice, um, English isn't my um, mother tongue. So if I'm inventing English words and you don't understand me, please give a yell <laughs> and I will try to invent another English word. Um, but um, the man I bumped onto via email uh, is indeed uh, Aoki-san, Aoki Yas Yasuto, uh, because he wrote an article um, about the SF Insight. And there's also a piece on the SFIO website, I noticed uh, an interview with uh, Aoki-san about it. And he talks about the, the chain of natural positive responses. And some of the things he says also about the case study he did, uh, was it does not matter if they use SF in the right way or not. What matters is the is that the bicycle is moving smoothly or not. And you can see if the bicycle is moving smoothly or not by checking if there is any CNPR phenomena observed. Um, and that was um, uh, yeah, a quotation that, that we assembled with the with, uh, thing I was also intrigued about. I also noticed some uh, chain of natural positive responses. Uh, uh, and I also noticed that it's um, the noticing itself already amplifies something. So that's also why I put uh, brackets about the amplifying thing, because the noticing itself is already very powerful, especially for me. When I notice something, when I notice, for example, when if colleagues are working well together, and I, as a team coach, 
for me, it's important that uh, my colleagues are working well together. That's my objective. That's my goal, you could say. Uh, and if I notice that, um, then I this colors my way of being in that team also. And, and just noticing that also gives me more confidence that they will um, that they will do their thing. And if I have more confidence that they will do their thing, then I will do do other interventions. And I will do less interventions. And I even do less SF interventions. Um, so and maybe that's also so, a reason why I, I, I like the title of the elegant art of noticing, because I want to do it as elegant as possible, not an aesthetical way. Uh, I don't think I'm elegant in that way, <laughs> but uh, but elegant in a way of of doing as little as possible, actually, um, and don't interrupt people when they are doing good things. Um, I, I even don't have to amplify it. I have to to back off then. <laughs> Um, so that's also a thing that that uh, I'm still grateful for Aoki-san uh, that he sent me this uh, his article. Um, and maybe a little image. Uh, by the way, I I, um, I learned this uh, video image from Sven, who is also attending uh, the workshop now, uh, because it's it's from another context. It's from physics. Um, and I will put the play button and just let you. Uh, Enjoy the video. Everybody knows about playing with dominoes, but what you may not know is that a domino can knock over another domino, which is about one and a half times larger. What I have here is a chain of dominoes. Each one is one and a half times larger than the previous one. The smallest domino is about five millimeters high and one millimeter thick. And I will carefully place it. And there are 13 dominoes. And the largest domino, it weighs about 100 pounds ugh, and is more than a meter tall. Ready? Boom. That was 13 dominoes. If I had 29 dominoes, the last domino would be as tall as the Empire State Building. Yeah, so it's another image, actually, of what um, what SF can do. Uh, and and, and um, putting our efforts in that tiny, tiny domino brick, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and just let it fall and, and see what happens is, is something that uh, that that makes me curious every day. Um, so uh, thank you, Sven, for uh, <laughs> for this video I, uh, I I picked up from you. Yeah. And that brings me back to um, to the article uh, and also about the concept of host leadership uh, because uh, Mark Bakergo wrote. Firstly, the book, the host leadership book. Um, yeah. And he talks about four positions we can take as a host leader. And he talks about being in the spotlight at the front of the stage uh, and do your thing as a leader. And he also talks about the importance of being with the guests. And being with the guests is a, is a great position to, to notice things. Uh, when you're in the spotlight, standing on the stage and doing your yearly talk, uh, then it's you could say it's um, it's more important to focus on your message than on the noticing. <laughs> um, he also talks about the gallery. The gallery is a metaphor for uh, taking more a um, um, meta view uh, and connect the things to each other as a leader, as a host leader. And being in the kitchen is morely a space or position. Uh, uh, where it's important to to withdraw yourself uh, and just reflect on your own. Uh, what have I noticed lately that intrigued me, for instance? That's the question I ask myself when I'm in the, the kitchen. Um, I also notice I have the the drum score of uh, Let's Dance of David Bowie at the at the above, uh, 
because I, for me, it's 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 like a rhythm section. A rhythm section in music. You have the the bass and the drums. That these are the rhythm sections in music, and and they 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 put on the the cadence, the the, the rhythm. Uh, and I think it's very important to um, to have a good rhythm in in uh, conversations or in in, in positions, um, and that's. That's the stepping forward and the stepping backward for me. That that's the rhythm I'm trying to do, because the music notes, for instance, the the SF questions for me, SF questions are music notes. If I ask uh, an SF question uh, in the wrong rhythm, it will be a bad question. <laughs> uh, the question on its own is is not bad, but the the timing I think is very important. When do you ask questions? When do you don't ask questions? Uh, uh, and that's also for as if uh, um, I think it's very important to don't practice as if practice questions uh, dogmatically. Uh, you you uh, it, it needs more, um, I think. So for me, I uh, keep in mind the rhythm section and uh, how do I um, accord to the to the rhythm I, I notice at the moment. And that's also, yeah, this this difference. Um, um, Steve Schaeser was talking about in his uh, article, the minimal elegance, which is therefore also, uh, which I picked up the word uh, elegance, uh, because he was saying an unrecognized difference, since it goes by unnoticed, this will not receive the amplification needed, and it will remain a difference that does not make a difference. And I, uh, I love that sentence. <laughs> there's so much happening. There's so, mon so many differences, differences happening. But if you don't notice them, they don't make a difference. Right? So a simple difference, often just some doubt, that alone can be enough to begin changing a lifelong pattern or way of thinking. So that's that's something I, I really like. And it has also, of course, Steve DeShazer, has also had his giants uh, on, on which he, he, he let uh, his inspiration go. And one of them is Gregory Bateson, because Gregory Bateson also talks about the difference. And he says, the difference that makes a difference uh, is a way in which to define something in terms of its relationships instead of isolating it with a name. And and that's more the yeah the systemic part uh, you, you can say about SF. Uh, um, and Gregory Bateson also talks about uh, what is the part the pattern that connects. It. it was never meant to be answered because these patterns are changing constantly. Uh, and Gregory Bateson. Um, his book is not so easy to read, um, but uh, Nora Bateson, the, the daughter of uh, Gregory Bateson, has, has put on uh, a movie about uh, the work of Gregory Bateson. It's called An Ecology of Mind. And also, if you receive the presentation, you can click on this title and then you will be redirected to the, um, um, to the video of um, Gregory Bateson. I think it's it's an amazing video. It's a... Uh, much easier to to look at the video than to read the book, actually. <laughs> uh, but on the other hand, you, you you can also see this in in the art world. Uh, um, for instance, René Magritte with his uh, "Ceci n'est pas un pipe." Uh, actually, that's what Gregory Bateson also was telling. Uh, um, it's the relation that this uh, the this pipe has to to its environment. Uh, if you you have a reflection of the image. That, that that is reflection. That isn't the the image in on on its own. So, so see the the positive peep also. And maybe I am. Um, I will want to show you an, an excerpt of the video, um, and I strongly invite you to buy this video also. It's it's I think it's ten euros or something like that. It's it's not that much. But I will um, stop the presentation for a moment and just go to the to the video excerpt. Okay, so that was a yeah um, a short piece of the of the movie, and I can't uh, tell it enough. It's a great movie. It's it's full of um, um, 
intriguing stuff that that makes you think. For instance, when, when, when I saw this excerpt of the movie, I was also thinking about how we also as as F practitioners uh, divide things into parts or or uh, uh, make a boot from a hexagon and and a rectangle. Uh, and something I notice uh, when I see a lot of uh, concepts coming coming by from from the SF community, I'm always um, fascinated about the forms they have. Um, for instance, the the quadrant of Hayes and Moon. It's a quadrant. Yeah? Uh, I think that's that's amazing. I, I I can it's it's convenient to 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 do my thing with this quadrant. Yeah? And when I'm busy with teams or or with people and so on, sometimes I have the tendency to 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 make uh, uh, five quadrants of it, and then it's not a quadrant, but uh, <laughs> to, to to put another thing. And it's uh, we we also uh, we have uh, circles, we have triangles, we have a lot of concept. We have matrix matrices uh, to put our, um, our our thing in it. Also, when we uh, work as a coach or a consultant and we uh, go by with organizations, we go with a framework. Yeah? And this framework helps. It's convenient. It's necessary. Uh, because I also think if you don't have a framework, then it would be very difficult to, to get your message also. But it's also tricky to... to um, to, to don't they think um, further on. Yeah? So when I see a circle, I want to make an avail of it. When, when I see uh, a square, I want to make a trapezium of it sometimes. <laughs> uh, I think it's important to, to, to keep being uh, alert of the descriptions we used to as a as F practitioner. And Gregory Bateson is, is, um, is somebody that who shook me up regularly about this uh, thing. So I'm grateful for him by that. Okay, but he also said the he referred to Alfred Korzybski. The map is not a territory, and I remember when I was at the Korzybski Institute, uh, Lucie Zabert also mentioned the map is not a territory, and I remember that not only me but also my colleagues were oh, the map is not a territory. What is it? <laughs> but now by reviewing Gregory Bateson. I'm getting the picture, I think. Yeah. Um, the things we see is, is is only the map, but the territory outside that is, is much greater. Yeah. Uh, and Gregory Bateson, he put a, a sentence along it, and he said, the name is not the thing named. And therefore, he's referring to the fact that the thing on its own uh, exists in its relationship to another thing. Mm. And to make a... Yeah, the, the, I, to transpone it to the team and, and organization coaching and so on. Uh, um, I also think it's 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 very important that uh, uh, the team is not the team the team named. Maybe <laughs> it's changing all the time, and and uh, um, it's very important to keep that in mind and keep noticing all these little differences that are useful. I think, um, yeah. So a, a question I quite often ask myself and also ask my colleague, I think it's very important to um, something I learned with, uh, in one of the SF podcasts of uh, Dominic and Elfie, they were talking about SF friend power. I think that's uh, very important because otherwise you're getting also in a, in a, in a how do you say it, cooker, cooker view. Uh, and um it's important to have a conversation made <laughs> uh, because you 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 will see and notice more. So therefore, I want to ask you the question: What did you notice lately that you are intrigued about? And maybe it's something from this webinar, or maybe it's something that that happened today or yesterday. Uh, it's it's fine for me. And also. Um, uh, Deepen it out, uh, ask the question, and what else? What else did I notice? Mm. Uh, and then I'm very fascinated because of the, the fact that uh, I presume that the things are related to each other. Uh, how do these things that you have been noticing, how do they relate to each other? Uh, that's something I'm, I'm curious about to, um, to, um, to hear from you. So I'm already looking forward to your feedback on these questions. Looks like everyone's back. Welcome back. 
Okay, great. Um, maybe just a, a couple of um, of reflections on on the exercise. Uh, I'm I'm curious uh, if if these were questions that uh, that tickled your mind or or um, or did it did it brought you to to better questions? I'm also curious about that. As if maybe if, if some somebody wants to to share your findings, I would be grateful. If I'm allowed, uh, why shortly to share something while I'm sitting at an airport? So I quite soon need to cancel uh, or uh, sign off. But but even the title of your session, the the the, the allergen art of noticing. You know, when I first the first moment that I read it, I started to observe how it might be elegant that art of noticing. So. Oh wow, that's interesting. So it's or, already opening, you know, like a fractal universe. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you. As, um, I just say it's my way of being a host leader. Uh, after trying to figure it out, what is it? What I do? Uh, and I came to this description. It's uh, I support people by being genuinely curious about the bits and pieces of the great stuff that they and other people do. And I, I actually invite them to explore several maps of reality. So I refer to the maps of reality because, in a way, reality is changing all the time. It's, it, it depends on the the, the relations and, and and what happens and and the, between these these maps. Um, and I like that a lot. Um, and I like to do that as elegant and joyful as can be. Elegant again, not in the aesthetical way, but in in, in the uh, light-footed way. Don't don't um, um, lean back as often as possible, and joyful because um, yeah, I like to enjoy myself. <laughs> Nothing more than that. <laughs> and as you can see in the picture, I'm standing at the back because I was taught by my SF uh, mentors that I have to lead from behind. So I thought I would go to the back and stand over there, uh, leading from behind. But it, uh, a book that I also want to mention is the, the, the one of John Berger, the, the, the art critic writer. Uh, and and when I read it, it, it was, yeah, I it, it was amazing for me because some of the, the quotes in the book, uh, as he says, we only see what we look at. And to look is an act of choice. So when we're talking about noticing, we're talking about listening, but also about seeing, also about sensing, smelling, and so on. But here in this context, it's mainly about seeing. And he says, we never look at just one thing, for instance, at a painting. Yeah? We are always looking at the relation between things and ourselves. And that's very intriguing because Gregory Bateson, I think, would, uh, would love to hear this too. Uh, and the relation between what we see and what we know that is never settled. It's, changed. it's changing all the time. So if you want to read a not as a book that's extremely as if, <laughs> Uh, go out to the bookshop and buy Ways of Seeing from uh, John Berger. Yeah, I was planning to talk also about uh, Aristotle with his uh, appeals uh, from the uh, art of rhetorics, but um, I will highlight some of them because I won't have um, a lot of time. But he's also talking about the concept of Kairos. Uh, um, Kairos is timing. Hmm? Uh, when do we ask our questions? Uh, the timing is extremely important. Uh, also for musicians, if you ask your question not in the rhythm, th then it doesn't sound well. Yeah? So maybe for later on, uh, if you are at home or you have some SF friend power, <laughs> ask the question to each other. Think back of a moment that you were spot on. Yeah? And what made this moment so spot on? Yeah? And and describe describe it like we are used to do in, in SF about uh, what thoughts, uh, logos that you have, uh, pathos, uh, the, the feelings, emotions, uh, ethos, the behavior, and the oikos. Um, the oikos is the, the environment. Yeah? Uh, so that's also interesting, which surroundings or conditions are the best for us to be our best self. Yeah? Uh, and that reminds me, uh, Andy, about the thing you said about the gift of space. I think this is so important to 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 um, to use the space uh, as an environment too, uh, and to take by ourselves what is a good space to be in. <laughs> uh, 
so that's about the oikos which is also very interesting but i don't have too much time of course but um, a little example is when um, this is a, a laptop of, uh, of my daughter uh, and she had her exams in June and uh, she was uh, uh, flipping out, actually. <laughs> she was stressed uh, and I said, OK, sit down, uh, uh, we're going to talk. Uh, and then I noticed in the Oikos, in the room, uh, that uh, there were some post-its on her laptop. Uh, so I, I noticed it. I selected one out of it. Uh, it's not about the will. Uh, uh, it's not about the skill. It's about the will. Uh, and by noticing that, I asked my 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 question oh yeah, i see this can you tell me more about it yeah. so actually it's um yeah that's something that intrigues me because peter de young and Sukin Burke talked about the listen select build principle when you listen carefully you select something and you build your further in intervention on it uh, yeah i'm curious what if we would expand it to to noticing what difference would that make yeah. um and for me for example um Noticing is about tasting, hearing, smelling, seeing, uh, listening. Um, so that's also, if you would have had more time, I would also would have uh, asked the question, what are your ways to train your noticing muscle? Because I'm also intrigued about the work that, for instance, uh, Wendy uh, does in Belgium with the horses. So the, uh, that's um, horses don't talk like we talk <laughs> they communicate in another way so there are other senses there so uh, that's also interesting uh, how does it work with horses or with dogs when i think about the last soul world too um, one of the ways i train my noticing muscle is ear training but um, that's also something for later on uh, phase shifting is a concept in minimal classical music that's um, yeah, if you're interested, go on Spotify and uh, yeah, listen to it. But also, it's not only what you do, it's also how you do it. I was also planning to do to to, to uh, let you watch the movie of the Ministry of Silly Walks from Monty Python. Uh, because <laughs> this, uh, this is about, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. And that's also something that intrigues me a lot. How do we, how do, we do things? Because I think it's very important to not become a solution-focused ministry of silly talks. Yeah? Um, because if we ask our questions, not on a good timing, not in a good environment, and so on, uh, yeah, it's, it's potentially being uh, a silly talk. <laughs> so be aware of the moments and, and, and the timings that we ask our questions, that we do our interventions. It's also important to develop your own technique. Um, Milton Erickson uh, has also a great short movie about it. Be your own natural self. That's also an invitation that I do to, to my colleagues too. Um, but that's also for another time. I will skip that one. And maybe if I can get to the closure, because you were talking about uh, what is it that makes our notice uh, certain things and certain things not. Yeah? I think actually all what I've has said today isn't important. Yeah? If you don't if you don't have a good night's sleep, it's one hell of an assignment to to notice. <laughs> so please uh, have a good night's sleep. Uh, and maybe something that helps to have a good night's sleep uh, is a bedtime story. And I want to tell a little bedtime story uh, for the last minute. Uh, and it's uh, from the book. I will stop sharing now. It's from the book. Um, stop sharing. Uh, Encounters from, uh, yeah, uh, all stories about Stevie Shazer. And it's um, an inter uh, a conversation with Plam and um, Panayot. Panna Yotov from uh, Bulgaria. I hope I pronounce it right. But he asks Steve DeShazer, is there anything else you would like to tell us? Steve DeShazer says, well, you have a nice, interesting plan, a hope, a dream, and you have to keep that in mind, taking half a step at a time. And when you are taking these half steps at a time, you will always need to be constantly aware of things that accidentally happen to you. And to take advantage of whatever accidentally happens, the miracle questions is an example. A client said something about 
it would take a miracle. And so heard the word miracle. Well, these sort of accidents, if we hadn't been prepared to look for accidents like this, we would have never learned to use the miracle question. It would have faded away. So you have to be always aware of accidents as you are walking your half steps at a time and taking advantage of them. Then, and that's interesting, the accidents may turn your way from what you think is your final goal, but you end up at another goal that is just as good or maybe better. So that was the bedtime story I want uh, to, uh, to tell you. But thank you a lot for attending this uh, webinar. It was really an honor and a pleasure for me for sharing things. Um, but as I said, I'm a lousy timekeeper. So uh, maybe in another soul world, I will do another thing. And then, of course, you're welcome, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.